Ayana Yoon, as you just heard. I am so happy to be with here tonight with you all in Berlin. What a great day yesterday in France. We had the elections. And I am so happy we made it without Marine Le Pen. I am so happy and proud of my country. So, before we start, I need to give you a bit of a warning. As you can probably hear right now, I sound terribly, terribly French. And I must apologize. I come from the south of France and I lived uh, 10 years in the UK, but the accent is like old wine. It keeps maturing, it just never disappears. So, I'm French, as you just heard. Uh, we only have 30 minutes, and this presentation is going to take you about 10 years to digest. So, it's going to be an absolute total bombardment. So, I'm going to bombard you. Uh, it's going to be an absolute chaos. I'm going to bombard you with architecture, literature, design, music, theater, and it's going to be an absolute chaos. So chaos usually is used uh, before a creative process, but in Nelly Benalun Studios, we actually see chaos as a method of public engagement. That's what we believe in. So what are we going to talk about today? So we are going to talk about the life, the sea, and the space viking which is a series TV, which is under development. We are still looking for funding, so if you're interested, I will show you the website later. And we are going to talk about the university of the underground. So education, of course, because as far as I am concerned, I have been teaching and practicing at all time, all the time. So we will talk about this a little bit later. But first, you must wonder, who is this crazy French woman talking to you right now? So, I am Nelly Benayoun, and I run the Nelly Benayoun Studios, classic, studios plural, because we are everywhere, above and beyond. So what do we do at Nelly Benayoun Studios? We actually try to design the impossible. So, I hate bullet points, but I thought for you tonight, I would actually give you some bullet points. So, she is French, that's done. Chaos, done. Designing the impossible, done. So we are going to talk about the design of experiences, the life, the sea, and the space viking, and the university of the underground a bit more in depth. So, what do we actually use in Nelly Benayoun Studio? We base our work on three things. Critical design, theater practices, and performance of politics. So what is critical design? Critical design has been created in 1999. So on the A, you can see what critical design, uh, product design is usually, uh, usually is, so problem solving. And on the B, what critical design is now, uh, it's problem finding. That's what it is about. And it's actually really in interesting for me uh, as a designer because it creates platform for debates. Theater of Cruelty, it has been created by Antonin Artaud. Antonin Artaud, French. So Antonin Artaud believed in violence in order to connect with an audience. In order to engage with an audience, Antonin Artaud would actually vomit on the audience. Uh, so we are not going to do it tonight, except if there are any volunteers. Uh, Greek tragedy, uh, reenactment, re so reenactment is uh, the, the experiences, the past experiences that we are bringing back to life. Uh, so, what we do at Nelly Benalun Studio is we actually work with space scientists in incredible sites, uh, like uh, the, the Large Hydron Collider, where we try to reproduce the first seconds of the Big Bang. How incredible is that? We create dark energy, in, uh, dark energy in your kitchen sink. Uh, we create volcanoes in your living room. This project was called the Other Volcano. The Soyuz chair, in collaboration with a French astronaut, the Soyuz chair uh, that uh, this woman on this video is experiencing. So, sorry, it's a bit noisy. Uh, so she's experiencing the three first uh, stages of the liftoff of the Soyuz rocket. 
the Super Kamin Kante, that was an experiment made in Japan, the Super K Sonic Boom, uh, the Micronation Revolution with about 84,000 marble. The design of experiences is basically what we do at Nelly Banana Studio. And actually, I should say, the design of extreme experiences. So now, let's go back to the life, the sea, and the space viking. So, as I said it before, it's a project under development. So, we are looking for fundings, and if you want to support a great life-changing cause, then please contact us. Uh, so, the life, the sea, and the space viking is based on terraforming, which is a scientific concept where we actually take life from the Earth and we try to recreate it on another planet. Actually, if you think about the Vikings, the Vikings were, at the origin, they were the concurrents of the old age, basically. Uh, and the Vikings, um, they conquered the entire world, they conquered America before even Christopher Columbus. And the Vikings, they actually, there is actually such a strong connection between them and uh, the space scientists of today. Uh, and we want in our film to see what if we put eight Vikings and eight uh, space scientists together on a ship under the sea, what would they do and what would we find? So in our five episodes of our TV series, so the life, the sea and the space Viking, that's what we explore. We are going to incredible sites and we are trying to find different uh, signals of life. So we are going to incredible places and we're uh, working with um, space scientists like Dell Anderson at the SETI Institute, uh, at the Dry Valley of Antarctica, where we are going to go if we have the fundings, Penny Boston at the Astrobiology Institute, uh, at the Giant Crystal Cave of Mexico, where we will go as well, Natalie Carroll, um, Jill Tarter. Jill Tarter, she was the former director of the SETI Institute, so have you, have you seen the film Contact with uh, Jodie Foster? So she was performing Jill Tarter, where she was looking for extraterrestrial signals on Earth. And actually, that's why we want to work with Jill uh, Tarter, uh, to try to find how this expedition could connect with the young generation, how we could engage with them. Uh, Liz Taylor, C uh, Sylvia Early, Chris Mackey, uh, Kerry Stephenson, all these incredible NASA scientists, and of course, the marvelous band, Sigurus. So, this is an image of what the ship could look like. So, we actually tried to put some uh, diamonds, if we could afford it, on it. Maybe crystals would be cheaper uh, to make it look like the light shining of the sea. Um, and or just like the L'Arche de Noé, the, the, the Noé Ark. Uh, this is a drawing, so um, the 15 would be the lab, uh, the living room in the middle. Uh, the red bit would be where the Vikings would actually have conversation with a NASA scientist. Uh, and this is the trailer. To give you a little bit of an idea of what the film could be, um, so we worked with uh, so many great people, and that's the idea we could come up, come up with. So let's watch it. Accelerating, isn't it? So that's why we need time to prepare. How can you prepare something that nobody has seen before? Well, that's true. But isn't it better to see it alive and safe? And we have a responsibility to our future nations to enable them to take part in our discovery peacefully and safely. This is not honor our ancestors! 
And we need to consider what about the people So we've seen all of this story. So recently, uh, I've been two kilometers underground in South Africa in a platinum mine where I went to look for the warmth of hell. So this video is going to show you a little bit about the, the expedition we went through. And you will see it's, it's a bit dangerous. It was a bit dangerous and scary. <clears throat> and so is it the, like, the deepest mine in the world? The deepest platinum mine. <laughs> Do you get platinum as a gift when you work in the platinum I mine? I wish. To the walls of hell. <laughs> Amazing, this is it. Let's take a picture of us. And then you can collect something. Where can you see the little microorganism? Unfortunately, we don't have much time, so if you're interested in watching the video, please visit our website. Uh, as I said, so the, the Life, the Sea and the Space Viking is a, um, it's a project under development and we're looking for fundings. So please feel free to contact us and to visit our website. Now we are uh, going Nelly, to talk Nelly, about stop, please. education Nelly. again. Okay, so, oh, sorry, I'm French. The University and Nelly Benayoun, sorry, sorry, excuse the me. As I come back to Spain to holiday, it's wonderful. Spain, yes, been, of, uh, oh my it God, been, it, a lot of sun, cerveza, playa, it's very good. Nelly, wait, and, please. Uh, Nelly, so oh, Nelly. It takes students. We picked 17 postgraduate students this year. Okay. And the university is... Please, wait. Nelly, take water, please. Okay. Oh, wow. Darling, it's very good. You're so wonderful, but I understand it's so difficult to be Nelly Benayoun. So yes. uh, I think I can be continue. Okay, give me that. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know okay. how it works. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Fine. So <clears throat> uh, anyway, the University of Underground. The University of Underground is university uh, when where you can student post grade student where you can uh, study free, yes, free. Free, uh, always. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, important, free. It's in plant in London and um, Amsterdam, and uh, in London and Amsterdam, and I, uh, I manage it, uh, Nelly Ben Ayun, with a lot of wonderful people, a wonderful teacher, a wonderful... People, people Nelly, as well, from the Sandberg oh. Institute. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. So, uh, I think I should uh, suggest to explain better the, the concept, the University of the Underground. I put uh, a video, okay? So. The University of the Underground is a postgraduate university. It provides a Master of Arts degree set over two years. The tuition is free, covered by a non profit foundation that supports the university. We're looking for creative soldiers that can infiltrate the power structures of digital, scientific and other ecosystems and modify them through music, film, design, theatre practices and politics. Our aim is to teach students how to engineer change and design experiences and events to support social dreaming, action and power shifts within these institutions. The University of the Underground is now selecting 15 students. The deadline to apply is the 1st of April. Apply now at universityoftheunderground.org. So, very good. It's more clear, right? Yes, of course. So, the University of the Underground is uh, composed of dreamer of the day, it's so important, uh, modern Willy Wonka, research, engineer, uh, um, scientific, engineer, designer, and Maker of new, maker of new day. Okay, so um, I mean that's not it's bad. That really is not bad. But I mean, I, what Nelly? the key thing is really Nelly. to make sure that you explain them why. Nelly. You know, why are we doing this, oh. right? Why are we doing the University of the Underground? So you should go back just a few <laughs> slides before. Just make it go back a bit more go before. Back. Go back. Like go back, go back. Okay, here. So why did we create the University of the, the Underground in the first place? So it's a postgraduate university, right? And we were trying to figure out a way in which we could make sure that, you know, students can have access to education for free. 
So what we thought about was to actually come up with this plan, 80% made of you know, philanthropists and donation money, so you can also donate to the University of the Underground, and 20% coming from government. So that in itself was going to support the tuition of our students. And then we also thought that actually, you know, when it comes to design, really, it's very important to think in terms of pluridisciplinarity. You know, the work that I do, and you probably have got that from the previous project that we have just shown you, is actually, you know, it is involved in design, but it's also talking about music, it's also talking about film practices, it's also talking about all these different items. So we wanted to develop a master program in which you, as a designer, as a young generation going into design, is going to be able to actually go and learn all of these disciplines and eventually mm -hmm. become the mythologist of tomorrow or kind of make your own jobs, right? So, you know, that's what you said as well. You know, we are very much involved with trying to figure out how we can create these networks of dreamers of the day. So we are trying to figure out a way where the young generation is going to be able to actually access public institutions, work with public institutions and design experiences. So what is the syllabus all about in the University of the Underground? You know, we are very much concerned about the notion that, um, no, the, very much concerned by the notion that social dreaming should be re-implanted, re-embedded into the way that public institutions share their knowledge and share their expertise with members of the public. So for us, really, social dreaming is a fuel to social action. And the other thing that we are very much concerned about is institutions, because let's face it, we are, you know, we have institutions that have like more than 200 years old. I mean, Europe is one of them. But how do we get members of the public to feel engaged with the cause? How do we get them to actually feel really uh, embedded and concerned by all of these topics? And what we think could bring that kind of connection with members of the public is the design of experiences. So what is the design of experiences? So for us, it very much is, you know, how you can bring together critical design, how can you bring together theatrical practices, how can you bring together film practices, music practices, and the performance of politics. And all of these things are being taught in the University of the Underground. So how do we do that? I mean, really, it is that for us. It really is how can we get the young people to actually become intelligent agents, modifying and kind of navigating through artificial systems. So, uh, let me see. So, I mean, we are a foundation, we are a non-profit, we have an incredible advisory board, which is, like I said, concerned very much by all the same topic than we are, which is basically film music, film practice. I mean, you're all, you know, like coming from many different backgrounds, so you know what I'm talking about when I'm saying that, you know, maybe in your job you're actually trained as a tech designer, but you might actually find yourself doing music, you might actually find yourself being in the digital world, and you might actually find yourself doing film. And so it's very super important that our team is also reflecting that. We have incredible guest tutor, people like Paul Asher, uh, uh, with, you know, one of the partners at Pentagram, people like Jasmina Tezanovic, people like Bruce Sterling, the science fiction author, is coming to teach in our university, Regina Debat uh, Regine Debati, you know, we have as well Rachel Armstrong, and so we have an incredible team of teachers, there is us, of course, but there is, you know, like other people who come, again, from political practices, again, from film practices, and this is, I mean, this is quite something, so, you know, We've just picked our 17 students, and actually this young chap there sent us this video because he wanted to get into the University of the Underground. So let me just share with you this video that he sent to us, and that was his application to the University of the Underground. Right now, I can tell you, unfortunately, we are close for application, but uh, here is Jack giving us his sort of insight on why he wants to be a part of the university. My name is Jack, and I want to change the world. Stefan, can you bring the light down? Light down. Ah, there, no, that's it. Great. I am process led, concept driven, wanna make this my profession. Here's a list of tools I use and things that I like to produce. Images, I can't get enough. Enjoy them even more when they move. Whoa, what a showroom. Typography, symbols that make up the everyday. The visual language with possibilities that are pretty endless. I want to join the university of the underground to develop my practice, create movement and action, do experimental challenging out of the box as I'm thinking. I mean, how great is that? Great. That was so, so great. <laughs> we did run the interviews just last week. And the question is whether or not Jack made it to the final, right? Because it's only 17 students on, you know, more than 250 applicants. 
Unfortunately, I can't share this with you right now, but uh, I think he might have well done it, you know. But anyway, so where are we based? We are based uh, in the underground of a nightclub called the Mercantine in Amsterdam, and we are also based in Village Underground, but we are also, obviously, we want to come in Berlin eventually. We only teach from down below because we actually believe that it's important for our students to actually learn that seed for change needs to take place. You know, we are like the rats of the city. So you start as being the rat of the city all the way until you make it to become president. That's what we teach in the University of the Underground. Now, if you want to support us, you know, you can donate us books. Right now, we have a donation scheme where you can send us some books. And I think it's very important to remember that right now we live in a world of myth, but it's not new. Right? It's not new. It's been there since 1957. There is someone called Roland Barthes, who is a French sociologist that was talking about this. And he was saying that basically the world is very much made of kind of like semiotics. The world is made of semiotics. And there is this man, this person called the mythologist. And what is the mythologist doing? The mythologist is revealing. It's revealing systems of meaning to you, member of the public. It's revealing this system of meaning that kind of like very much are inside public institutions. Now, for me, it's very important that we start to think about how a designer is also a mythologist to some extent. And mythology, you know, range from everything. It range from the visage of Cabo to doppelganger to like, you know, the liquid like gel of the tide. All of these things are very much myth to some extent. So for us, this is what we do in the studio. We try to figure out ways where we can reveal this power structure to members of the public. So. Anyway, let's keep on going because I have, we have so much to go through. And uh, this is pretty epic. Uh, yeah, la, la, that's it. Okay. Oh, International Space Orchestra. Orchestra. Total Orchestra. bombardment. I mean, we did tell you that was the Total Bombardment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the International Space Orchestra yeah. now. So Total Bombardment, I mean, it's very much what you're going to experience right now. I know this is probably totally epic for you, right? <laughs> totally epic. This is the way it always is with us. It's like usually it takes about six months to digest. Yeah. So just stay with me, you know, like this is going to be like going through your digestive system. And in six months, you're going to call us and you're going to be like, Nelly, you know, all of what you said made sense. Wait. Anyway, right now, let's speak about the International Space Orchestra. So what is the International Space Orchestra? The Have you ever heard of it? The International Space Orchestra. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's in collaboration with the NASA and with space mm. scientists yeah. uh, that to create music to show that they have so much challenges, but that was just another challenge for them, uh, for, for myself, Nelly, to create an, or an orchestra in collaboration with the NASA. It was such an interesting uh, and inspiring experience. Yeah, uh, again, you're not telling them why it was interesting. You know, it's like if you just tell them what it is, but you don't explain them why this is interesting, then they're never we, going to understand anything about it. We have so much to go through, Nelly, I can't... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I know, but, you know, Total Bombardment is something that you have to kind of really rehearse, huh? I mean, it's like, Nelly, you don't just get it just like that anyway. Yeah, so what sure. is the International Space Orchestra? International Space Orchestra is an orchestra made of space scientists, like you said. And they are all very much like senior scientists at NASA. You have the head of NASA playing the gong, astronaut guy playing the percussion, and off we go. Here they are reenacting everything that went wrong in the space program. So, of course, of course, you know, when I went to the agency, NASA, and I said to them, let's do an orchestra, so then we can share with members of the public the craft of space exploration through the performance of a Greek tragedy, you can imagine that they say to me, absolutely no way, right? So this is where our special come in, right? This is our special, the hammering technique. Do you want to tell them what the hammering technique is? The hammering technique, uh, mm. it just, uh, it's just a technique where you hammer information uh, into, well, yeah, your brain to, to just express ideas and insist on ideas. Um, yeah. it's, it's actually are, to it's, do... It's something you are experiencing right now, eh? The hammering technique. It's a no, yeah, which is yeah, never yeah. a no, and it becomes a yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for us, when you say no to us, then the chances are that we will just duplicate and actually go back and go back and go back That's until you pretty much yes. you end up saying yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this is what we did. Mm -hmm. And so we went back and we went back and we went back until finally someone told us that, yes, we could do this project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, then we got a whole great team of people to actually come and compose music for them. And then off we go performing in front of the world's largest wind tunnel. Here they are. And then eventually, because it is California and everything can happen in California, then we ended up recording at Skywalker, which is the place where they recorded Star Wars. And so eventually, because then I came back and I said, we did this project and nobody believed in it. So we made a feature-length film, which actually tell you the entire story 
about the international space orchestra you can actually watch it online uh, but mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah it just tell you how we actually made this impossible project happen uh, now I'm going to just uh, tell you a bit more about how uh, I mean you know this year the international space orchestra is going to party their fifth year anniversary uh, we've been pretty much like yeah we've been starting back in 2012 so that makes quite a while and um, the way we actually designed the International Space Orchestra so it remained inside an agency like NASA was to design it like a counterculture. So if you have never heard this word of counterculture, a counterculture is a notion of like developing a culture that will kind of like go against the usual, um, the usual kind of critical thoughts of an agency or an institution. And that was something that was actually theorized by someone called uh, Bourdieu, basically, and what he was saying, he was saying that in order for you to remain inside an institution, you have to think in terms of these different capital. So what we did in the International Space Orchestra is we thought about it in terms of membership, right? Only, only, you know, you only become a member if you perform with the International Space Orchestra, so you need a membership. Then the second thing was the cultural capital. How can we actually get you to acquire knowledge? And of course, when you learn music, you learn a form of knowledge. And then the last thing to actually make sure you can create a counterculture is to think in terms of economics. And what we did in the International Space Orchestra is that for each performance we do, you get a new patch. So it became quite an elective, you know, quite an elective uh, place, in fact. So this is typically some of the patch that we have designed for the International Space Orchestra. This is the one that we did for Beck, which is why, well, you know, the musicians, uh, here it's for uh, Savages, which we did at the Fillmore Theater. If you don't know what the Fillmore is, it's a place where the Velvet Underground, Janis Joplin, all these people were uh, formed and, you know, actually did their first performance. And then finally, lately, the International Space Orchestra actually performed with Sigouros in front of the Hollywood Ball, which is 17,500 people. Yes, you can be a NASA scientist and be actually a, an amazing rock star. And so off we go, here it is, them, they got, you know, standing ovation. They're getting better and better at it. And like I said, you know, when you come from a scientific background and you actually manage to perform uh, on stages, like this is the International Space Orchestra jumping on stage with this rock band, uh, rock band called Savages. Here they are, you know, performing. Here we go. Let's go to the Hollywood Ball in LA. Yes. Boom, boom, boom with the cigarettes. This is the singing. This is excitement. We got on stage. Ah la la, yes. We never stop. The level of energy are very high. May we? Are you awake? What's happening, Berlin? Come on. Allez, allez. Oui, oui, oui. That's it, that's it. That's more like it. That's what we like. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, so that gives you an idea of what we do a bit. I mean, anyway, it just keep on going and it never ends because, you know, pretty much that's what we do in the studio. We just keep on bombarding. And I mean, you can see all of what we do. This is Disaster Playground. I mean, but we want to take some questions. But Disaster Playground was also a feature lens film that we did, which is basically about the chain of command, which is in place if an asteroid was to strike. You probably think, because you've seen this film, Armageddon, Gravity, Deep Impact, you probably think that there is someone here who is going to save you if an asteroid was to strike. Well, let me tell you, Bruce Willis is not going to come and save us with a big drill. This is not happening. So actually, we were looking for, you know, who are the people that will actually have to behave like Bruce Willis if something like that was to happen? And what we did is we really tried to trace them down. We traced all of the space scientists that will have a say to say to, uh, something to say if something a big disaster like that was to happen. So we went to find them, and like you said, we were talking about theater of cruelty before. We came with these big props, and we kind of like got them involved with it. And so anyway, I'm not going to show you all of this, but anyway, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking too much. We have no more time. This was an absolute total bombardment, and now we are ready to take all of your questions. Uh, this is happening. We never ever end. Oh la la, oh la la, total bombardment. Barbie, yes, we have a Barbie. Oh la la, Lego, total bombardment. Never stop. Voila, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, any question for Nelly Benayoun? Any question for Nelly? Any questions for Nelly? Ah, yeah. We have to do the questions on the side of the stage because oh, we are really... Okay. <laughs> I really... Tough on time. No time for no our time. question. Unfortunately. Oh, no, I'm very oh, sorry. La, la. Oh. Oh. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Oh. No time okay. for question. The best part. Yes. Oh. 
Bon, ben bah, voilà. Bon, ben bah, voilà. Ça ouais. bite, ça bite. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.